Hi everyone, and welcome to week 21. This week, we're gonna continue in our Combinator series, and I'm going to cover how to use it as an effects device. And then I'm gonna show you how to do some advanced Combinator programming tricks, which I used when I created some of the patches for the factory sound bank for the Reason 5 Record 1.5 Duo. All right, lots of programming and patching to do, so let's go right into it. Since we covered the basics of the Combinator in last week's episode, we're gonna get right into using this as an effects processor. Notice that when you create a Combinator and flip the rack around, you have these audio jacks here that say Combi Input. This is where you would connect either the audio output of the device that you want to process, or aug sends from your mixer to feed a send type effect. Notice that the jacks just under that say two devices. These act as a pass-through and allow you to route audio to the devices which are contained inside that combinator. Normally, if you create an effect device inside a combinator, this will automatically get routed to its input. But if you're looking to create a multi-effect patch, you'll probably need to manually route this. As with last week's episode, I always suggest that you use some sort of mixer inside the combinator when you're using multiple devices, even if they're effect-based ones. Often I will also use the Spider Audio Merger Splitter as a way to send the incoming signal to multiple devices. Let's hear what some preset effects sound like on this drum loop and have a look at what devices are contained inside of them. As you can see, you can create some really unique effects using the Combinator as an effect device, since you have an unlimited amount of devices inside of it, and you can route things in some very unusual and unique ways. I also mentioned last week that I would show how to create ghost in the machine scenarios in a Combinator. Let me explain what I mean by that. Since we know that you can assign many parameters to the rotary knobs and buttons of the Combinator, you can obviously tweak those and record them as automation in a sequencer track. But what if you wanted something else to tweak those knobs for you automatically and repeat the change in a predictable way? Have a look at the back of the combinator. See the rotary 1 through 4 CV input jacks under the modulation input section? Those are for you to connect some CV source to turn the knobs for you. Let's say you had rotary knob 1 changing the pattern of a matrix sequencer inside of a combinator. You could use an LFO or even another matrix to select the patterns for you in some sort of sequence or even randomly. Or maybe you have that knob assigned to select different wavetable positions on a Thor wavetable oscillator, as well as changing the oscillator index for a maelstrom. You could use one of the mod or LFOs of the maelstrom to turn that knob as well. All you do is connect your CV source to the rotary CV input jack on the back and adjust the attenuator knob to decide the range of response and poof, instant ghost in the machine. Usually, when I create patches that have this function, I use a Maelstrom mod, since you can turn it on or off, and assign that to one of the buttons on the combinator. That gives you much more flexibility when you're playing the patch. All 
right, now it's on to the fun stuff. I'm going to show you how I created this effect, which is included in the Record 1.5 factory sound bank. I call it the Octo Effects series, and I've created a few different flavors for your ears. The concept here was to create multi effects where each effect is heard as a pattern, similar to the VST plugin's glitch or major malfunction. First, let's have a listen. Okay, now let's take a closer look at what's happening in this Combinator patch. As you see, the mixer solo is being enabled in a pattern sequence. We'll get to how I did that in a second. Let's first take a look at the routing. Since I wanted to apply eight different effects, I needed to create eight stereo copies of the Combi input audio jacks. And as you can see here, I've used the Spider audio splitters to do just that. I needed three of those, since the first one will give me three copies, and then it feeds into the second one, which gives me another three copies, and then that feeds into the third one, which gives me the last two copies. Pretty fun, huh? Now what I did is take each of those eight stereo copies and fed each one into its own effect device, and then the output of each of those devices is fed into its individual 14x2 mixer channel. Since I wanted to hear a single effect for each part of the pattern, I needed to solo its mixer channel. If you did not already know this, you can solo and mute channels of the 14x2 mixer when you're using MIDI notes from a controller keyboard. Now if I wanted to be able to play which effect I'm hearing using a MIDI keyboard, I could, but it takes a bit of practice to remember which octave and notes would be assigned to each effect. So what I wanted to do was just be able to play the song and have the effects play back as a pattern synced to the tempo of the song. The first thing I need here is to make sure that the mixer is set to receive notes in the programmer section right here. I use the step sequencer note row of this Thor to play the notes for me and the gate length row to press and release each note. As you can see, I have an eight step pattern which plays the notes from C0 to C1, C0 being solo for mixer channel one. And on the gate length row, I set each knob to 99%. If I did not use a value of less than 100%, then what would happen is each mixer channel would always stay in solo and it would turn into a big wall of sound, but not in a good way. In order to have this Thor trigger the combinator, I routed the note CV out of the Thor to the sequencer control CV in of the combinator and the gate velocity CV out to the sequencer control gate in. Then I set the run mode to repeat, the direction to random, turn synced on, and the synced rate to 1 8 Next thing to do was to make sure that no other device in this combinator is getting triggered by the notes, so I checked off receive notes for all of the other devices. The last thing to do was assign some knobs and allow some ways to change how the pattern of effects is getting played. I assigned the sequencer direction to rotary knob 1 here, and the synced rate to rotary knob 2 here and I made sure that the minimum and maximum values only allowed me to select ranges that sounded good. And there we have it, a pattern sequence multi-effect switcher that can seriously alter any audio signal. Sorry, but I can't upload the patch for this one this week. You're just gonna have to wait for Record 1.5 to get your hands on it. Well, I hope that these last two weeks of Combinator tips and tricks have helped open your mind to just what's possible with the Combinator, and that you start to explore and experiment with some of your own custom patches. If you're creating your own patch and you find that you get really stuck, please feel free to email me the patch and also a description of what it is that you're trying to achieve, and I'm, I'll do my best to try and help you out with the patch. Well, that's it for this week, and again, I'm James Bernard with Propellerhead Software, and I'll see you all in a week. Bye.